Well, we've looked at the wall of guns, we've looked at the pistols, now we're going to look, what do you want to call this, the gun vault? The gun storage room? I don't know. But this is kind of where everything that's not necessarily pretty enough to go on the wall, and is not, in general, a pistol, goes. So, uh, let's put this thing up on the tripod, and let's take a look at everything in this room. A couple things to note about this room. It is filthy. Filthy, disorganized. This is boxes, parts, magazines, gear, all sorts of things. This is more miscellaneous parts. Basically whole guns that are not quite complete, but almost complete. Homemade alcohol that is aging, getting very mellow. But let's take a look. Keep in mind, most of the things in here, some of them are complete, some of them are not. Some of them are just, you know, waiting for various parts to be put on and are used as parts guns, like this, for example. G&G Combat Machine. One of the first combat machines I ever uh, reviewed and tested. This normally has a dissipator style handguard on it, but currently has no handguard because the handguard was stolen off of this for another project that got shipped to a viewer. Next up, you've got the Carl. This G&G G960 based bolt action sniper rifle with an upside down rail from an M14 and an EBR stock. This thing is gas powered very quiet and just very cool. Has no optic on it currently because the optic was put on, well, frankly, something else. No gun collection will be complete without an AUG. And my AUG, of course, is my Giraffe Lodge AUG. This is a JG military model, terrible eye relief scope, and painted to look like a giraffe, as one does with an AUG. Next up, you have a G&G &G uh, I'm probably going to get the designation on this wrong. I think it's a GK74M. I don't really know what this is, but this is the one that has the nice MOSFET inside of it. Very nice gearbox. It's probably one of the better AKs. This guy should probably be on my wall, but uh, for now, it's not. Next up, a lot of these ARs you will find are very incomplete. They don't have stocks, things like that. This is an Ares. This is uh, kind of cool because it's custom laser engraved for me, um, but just needs a flash hider on the front and a stock. A lot of these, in honesty, I just salvage parts off of and ultimately they get put back together in one form or another. Here you have the Echo One uh, Knight's Armament License Series. These are polymer with polymer bodies with a metal handguard, it's a key mod handguard on this one. And I've got a modified bull barrel style setup on the front. Next up, it's gonna take a minute. This is a Lancer Tactical. Um, needs a different front end to put on it, obviously. A little bit of a barrel extension issue. Normally I'd be running this integrally suppressed, but that suppressor went on something else. And this guy is full of high speed components. You have an Echo One Genesis, the guy that I really like with the mid length gas system and handguard. Really, really like this gun. This is one of my favorite budget guns for a while. Um, I did some torture testing with it, including freezing it overnight. You have a Classic Army ISSC. Um, I forget the name of this. That's really bad. Don't get too mad at me, Classic Army. This is basically their variant of a SCAR um, based off of a 22 long rifle caliber real version. So it is not stepping on anyone's toes in the trademark or copyright department. Next up, we've got my blunderbuss built off of a well VSR 10 clone and with a funnel on the front. Yeah, it's a funnel. Dump some BBs down there, shoot them out in the cloud. This thing was a very fun build. Here is a Echo One MP5. Uh, I think this was the Echo One SOB, if I remember what they called it. Um, I really loved the futuristic look on this. Unfortunately, you'll notice no gearbox. That's because I took it apart and I cannot figure out how to put the trigger back into it because MP5 triggers are a huge pain in the butt. This is a woefully incomplete. Front end looks real nice, but the back end, obviously missing a couple components here. But this guy is a uh, Top Tech. So, the Top Tech AR. Next to that, you've got another stockless AR. What's funny is that I've got stocks all over the place. I really just need to 
put them on these things. But I digress. This is an Echo One Stag Arms M8A3. Uh, this guy you will frequently see me running with the uh, um, G36C top rail on it, but just a cool little polymer bodied AEG. This is a WE G36. Technically, this would be a G36C, so I suppose we could take this barrel extension off, except I haven't actually have a barrel extension in there. Um, this guy was run with an AG36 grenade launcher on it. It's just not on there for now because I might be stealing that for another project that you guys would like to see. But this is a gas blowback G36C. Now we're getting to some of the weirder stuff. This is an SR25 S system. So SR25 762AR with an S system CQB front end. Weird gun, I really like it. A lot of people in the last video were asking, where is my L85? Fret not guys, it's down here. I just didn't have room to store it up there. But this is just the standard Army L85. It's had a little bit of custom work done to it in the form of this uh, extended top rail. Makes mounting 20 millimeter optics and accessories easier. And it's full auto only because these things are finicky and kind of a pain in the butt. So it's gonna start falling over here pretty soon. This is a Bolt SOP mod mocked up with Noveski parts. Recoil AEG, full metal, very nice gun. Um, just is just kind of a little boring looking, I hate to say, compared to some of my other ones. Those of you Airsoft Retreat guys may recognize this. This is my polished, a closer look at this. So shiny. Hand polished this, hand tools. There were no power tools used on this, no Dremel tool, nothing. So this was my polished race gun and uh, it's cool. I love the way this thing looks. I wish I could build guns this cool again, but alas, now I'm boring. And now I just chop the barrels off of things. Here you've got Apex R5, burnt bronze finish. Very attractive gun. Um, shame these things didn't sell too great. Actually, do you know what? No, these ones sold well. Sorry, I get these confused with the classic army um, similar models, but um, yeah, those sold pretty well. Is the AEX models by that were OEM'd by Classic Army that didn't sell great. But those guys, it seems like those are hard to find in stock. I think those actually sold a little too well. Along with that, here's the ASG Bren. Everyone loves the Bren. The only reason it's down here is because I need to take some pictures for an upcoming magazine review on Airsoft Insider. Next up you have my first semi-high speed build. This is an old Evic, if you're watching, Matrix Tactical Systems. This is an AIM based gun, AIM. Um, and these things are fast, screaming fast guns in stock form. I've got it equipped with some MOE furniture and it just looks very nice. Looks like something you would buy today. Just put on the gloves for this one. This is the Somali Pirate AK. It's my AKS 74U by Javelin Airsoft Works that is very rusty and burnt and piratey, but still works very, very well. Next to that, Echo One. This guy, the Red Star LMG. Um, if you need to have some op for light machine gun power, this is an excellent option for that. Um, I got drunk and built this thing one day. Here you have yourself the makings of an Echo One AR57 DMR. Got a sniper style stock, a bipod, and I was running this thing with an extended barrel. It's real dumb and fun. That's why I like it. I actually, this was one of the guns that I had a real hard on for. This thing, I actually talked to the manufacturer of the real gun to try to get dimensions to try to build one of these myself. Luckily, didn't have to. Echo One did the hard work for me. Make sure guns aren't falling over. This is a, an all China made, I don't remember who makes this, BE maybe? But this is an eight millimeter gas powered um, M500 with fake wood. And like all of these, it is kind of broken. Uh, the pump arms on these things break and this is no exception. It's shiny, it looks real pretty, it's kind of held together by JB Weld, but it doesn't work unfortunately because those pump arms are broken. This is a classic army tactical AK model. This is a new one, has their MOSFET. Um, very nice gun. I've got some cool ideas for a project for this. Just 
Too many ideas and not enough time. Back even further, this is the King Arms BRO15, the Black Rain Ordnance. Gorgeous gun, absolutely gorgeous gun. Very well made, has a MOSFET hidden here. Very cool stuff. And uh, these guys were just really kind of expensive. Um, and I, I don't think I've ever actually seen them in stock. So either they sold very well or they didn't sell at all. I'm not sure. I should probably ask King Arms about that to see what the case is. Here in the Ancient History Collection, you have a Well XM8, all plastic. So creaky. But inside this, you have SRC G36 guts. So this thing is a very good shooter. Throw an optic on there and you are in business. From the future that never was to the past that we cannot live without, this is a Mosin Nagant. This is gas powered. And this was manufactured by PPS, I believe. I'd have to check, honestly. I don't remember who makes this thing, but I think this was PPS. Fake wood, all plastic. Not the prettiest gun, but it works as well as a Mosin does, which means you can point it in a general direction and kind of hit what you're aiming at. You have a JG MP5, or excuse me, G3SD. This is my custom G3SD that I built off of a G3 SG1 and an MP5SD. I guess we'll take a look at its ugly cousin, the MP5 SG1. Terrible ideas. These were in fact one of my favorite Booligan's Bad Ideas videos. This is a Sima M14, uh, Soak 16, does not have the top rail on it. This had a top rail on it, which became the bottom rail on my, my Carl rifle, that compact, um, the compact assault rifle lightweight, I don't remember what I call that thing, compact accurate rifle lightweight. That thing, the second one that I showed you. This is where stuff is really precariously perched, so uh, don't be surprised if stuff falls down. Um, this HK33, if I remember my classifications correctly, this is a weird hybrid gun. You can pump it and shoot single shot, or you can shoot it in AEG mode. It is full metal. It's a clone of the KSC, I believe, but just a cool, obscure little all China made gun. Full metal, I mean, the thing is really rock solid, but uh, yeah, they just have kind of a finicky internal system that doesn't work so great. Shotgun, tri shot. Another tri shot shotgun. This one with an AR magazine feed adapter and a pistol grip. Another shotgun, because everybody needs lots of shotguns. You have a Ares VZ58. This guy should be a little closer to the front, because this is a really nice replica. Full metal body, good high strength polymer handguard. Just a nice. AG. It is compatible with the programmable module, so you have burst mode on it. And uh, these guys, the prices on them kind of tanked. They're cheap guns now. They're sub 200 bucks. And if you're looking for something like that, it's probably the cheapest way to get into a smart AEG these days. Wouldn't be complete without cowboy gun. So here you've got the AK Lever Action 1892. Very cool gun. Unfortunately, they leak gas like it's nobody's business. A first gen APS UAR, kind of terrible, but redeemable in some ways. You can make these work with mid cap magazines with a little bit of elbow grease. A not particularly functional, I don't even remember who made this. I think this is a, some, some random all China made gas blowback AR-15 that I've never been able to get to shoot right. For whatever reason, the bolt carrier group is mildly not to spec, and some of the Western Arms parts that I put in it just didn't work. Um, and I'd love to get a little bit more work done and get that thing going, but alas. This thing's a piece of history here. This is the Echo One CAW M1014, basically a pump action DMR with a DB Custom 6.01 millimeter custom type bore barrel. And unfortunately, it's been sitting here and it's a little humid down here. I need to put a dehumidifier because it unfortunately got a little bit of water damage. Just sitting here, a little bit of surface rust. Uh, but these guys were very expensive Echo One guns for the time. Didn't sell too great, but it was part of their collaboration with CAW. 
Last thing over here is a terrible, truly terrible JLS scar. This thing's barely an AG, and even my terrible paint job couldn't fix it. It's just a terrible, terrible plastic AEG. Up here, you have weird parts. You've got grenade shells. You've got bodies for G36s. You've got full ARs. Just need lots of parts added to it. Optics, sights, rails, screws, knives for reasons. Um, this is a uh, WE Katana. Very nice AG. I just need to figure out what barrel setup I'm going to run on it. So this, when you guys see me put together weird projects, when you see me put together like, oh, hey, I just threw this thing together, this is the kind of stuff, and this is where I build that stuff from. I find an AG and I throw stuff together. Things like this. Do I need to put this body back on an AR? Do I need to put it on this katana? Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do next with it. I really don't know until I do it. And that's about the tour of the gun room. And this still isn't all my guns. I have a problem. Um, so there's going to be one more video. The video that's everything else. The stuff that's not on the wall, that's not a pistol, that's not in my gun room here. That's just kind of everywhere else. So that video will be coming probably early next week once I can get back over here to a little bit more filming. But that gives you kind of the general idea of the ridiculousness of my Airsoft collection. Stay tuned. One more video to go. Thanks for watching.